Hi there, and welcome to the podcast, Life as a, a show intently focused on exploring and unearthing the details of professions and the people behind them. I'm your host, Christopher Schoenwald. I don't know about you, but one of the things I love most about art and all things artistry related is the emotion it can evoke from within. The spectrum of feeling, of course, can range from inspiration to wonder to awe, right on through to melancholy and sadness. Naturally, this is what makes art, well, art. The appreciation of it is so singularly special and personalized to each individual. Now, I must say, there is one spectacular type of art form that has been catching my eye over the last few years. It's a kind that is routinely found on social media in the form of pictures, memes, videos, and so on. What I'm referring to is cake artistry, or even illusion. Seemingly real objects or savory food items that are then sliced by a knife to reveal they were actually cake all along. I mean, it's quite hypnotic and totally binge-worthy. Have you ever wondered what it would take to do this? or what truly goes into the genius and skill of it all? Well, you're not alone. Netflix, you know, Netflix, Netflix. They've just dropped a brand new series called Is It Cake, which features some of the best cake artisans from around the world. Now here's the really exciting part. I have one of these cake illusionary masters from the Netflix show Is It Cake on to chat all about this world. Toronto-based master cake illusionist April Julian of the brand new Netflix series Is It Cake has been dreaming up award-winning custom cakes and desserts since 2007. April's love for baking and visual arts began at an early age. Even before she was old enough to use an oven, she would fill her mother's baking pans with hand towels and pretend they were freshly baked cakes. On Christmas or birthdays, art supplies were always on the top of her wish list. It wasn't until decades later when she saw master cake artist Ron Ben Israel demonstrating the making of a sugar orchid on TV that she realized there was a way to combine her two greatest passions. Since that chance discovery, April has trained under some of the greatest cake artists in the world and honed her own unique style and artistry. Today, her award-winning creations have been featured in a number of international publications, including American Cake Decorating Magazine and Cake Craft and Decoration UK. And now you can catch her on Netflix's new show, Is It Cake?, which combines foodie culture with a good old-fashioned reality baking competition series. The show is hosted by Saturday Night Live star Mikey Day, and has a panel of celebrity judges who will attempt to distinguish between hyper-realistic cakes and everyday objects. So with all of that in mind, April, I'm absolutely thrilled to have you on the show today. Welcome. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> something. This is an area that I've had my eye on for quite some time, so I'm really excited to, to learn more about it, and I'm sure a lot of the listeners are too. Cool. So why don't we get right into it? Um, The first segment is something called Coloring Wikipedia. And basically, it's a segment where I just sort of read off a definition of your profession and a couple of reasons I like to do this. One, it brings everyone up to speed on what it is that you do. And then two, from the guest perspective, it's also nice because I think it allows for a jumping off point. Sometimes there's things that are missing from the definition that you know as a professional that are very much part of what you do and it allows for us to uh, kind of further explore um, your job. So yeah, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get right into it. Let's do it. Um, a bit of bad news though. <laughs> Wikipedia doesn't exactly cover your profession, so we had to improvise a little. Okay. Um, the closest I could come to was cake decorating. But uh, again, I think we can make this work. What I have done is I've added in your title of master cake illusionist to the definition of cake decorating. So I'm going to read that out. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. let's go with that. So let me read that out for you. And then I'll ask uh, for some comments. So master cake illusionist. Master cake illusionists engage in cake decorating, which is one of the sugar arts that uses icing, frosting, and other edible decorative elements to make plain cakes more visually interesting. Uh, 
The cake itself may be molded during baking and sculpted after baking as part of this, and it may take simple or elaborate three-dimensional shapes as part of or as its entire decoration. Cake decorating has become a unique art form with examples ranging from simply decorated single layer cakes to complex multi-layered three-dimensional creations with extensive edible decorations. There it is, a bit wordy, a bit of a mouthful, but what do you think mm. right off the bat? Yeah, that's pretty accurate, I'd say. Um, one thing I would add that I've discovered over the years of you know, being asked to make wacky things is, you know, one of the places I go to get uh, materials is actually um, the hardware store. <laughs> wow. A lot of the stuff, particularly if you're going to make something um, that sort of has to defy gravity, you need to have a very strong internal structure that will support that yeah right yeah, so there yeah. have been times where I'll find myself you know in Home Depot for hours in the plumbing section and they're like you know what are you doing here what do you what do you need fixing I'm like it's okay it, like <laughs> you can't help me <laughs> I, I can just imagine the look of what these people are, are thinking sure. when you tell them exactly what you are doing there yeah wow exactly I'm like this is what I'm doing I'm creating this like beaver coming out of a pond and they're like okay we can't help <laughs> you with that sorry <laughs> That is awesome. I mean, right out of the gate here, we have the first nugget like that is you're completely blindsiding me here. And I'm sure listeners as well, like this, this is the stuff that I think is just absolutely fascinating. Like I would never imagine the two of those sort of worlds colliding hardware stores and then cake artistry. <laughs> you know, like, I love it. Okay. It's not just piping bags, you know, and like rolling pins. It's, uh, you know, wrenches, nuts and bolts. It's a lot of stuff. Goes that into is this. awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, getting back to the definition really quickly, was there anything missing from it you felt? You know, I don't know. It sounded pretty good to me. Um, no, I think that sounds about right. I mean, it, it's not an exhaustive list of the materials, but you mentioned things like icing. Fondant is huge. Um, for my type of cake decorating, specifically hyper illusion, yeah. um, modeling chocolate is really the key. Um, okay. because it behaves a lot like, uh, clay modeling clay. Right. Um, and so you can hide, um, seams when you're enrobing something in this sort of sugary material, you're going to have a seam, right? And that's yeah. a dead giveaway. You can tell if like these two pieces come together, that that's obviously, uh, you know, not the real deal. Right. Modeling chocolate really allows you to smooth that away. So that is like the number one, I would say, necessary material if you want to fool people modeling um, chocolate i didn't even know such a thing existed i mean mm. yeah it's actually delicious <laughs> yeah, well i mean how could it not be right I mean, i'm sure it must be <laughs> mm -hmm. okay and can you purchase that anywhere or is that something that's like a specialty specialty item that you really have to sort of source source um you can find that definitely in cake decorating stores um but you can actually make it what it essentially is if you've ever melted chocolate and accidentally introduced a little bit of liquid mm -hmm. and then it seizes up into this weird mess and you're like, yeah. ah, what am I supposed to do with this? That's essentially what modern chocolate is. It's seized chocolate. Okay. Uh, melted chocolate seized with like a corn syrup. And then it kind of just turns into this moldable clay. Yeah. So huh. I don't know how someone found that out, but it was, they must've made a failed experiment with uh, <laughs> melting chocolate, but yeah. Um, yeah, no, it works great. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right. Well, why don't we skip on over into a new segment here? Uh, we'll continue mm -hmm. on with this a little bit more with a, a Q&A discovery. I'm just going to fire off some questions for you. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe to lead off with the segment, um, I did allude to this in the, the intro, you know, some of your backstory and how you kind of got into what you're doing right now. But maybe it'd be mm -hmm. interesting for, for listeners. And of course, it would be for myself to hear a little bit more about it from your own you know, from your own words, um, you know, what took you here? What brought you to this point right now? Uh, to being in cakes at all, to have from the beginning? Yeah, yeah. I guess kind of that story. link of, you know, in the, I was speaking about in the beginning of a, yes. how as a child, you were kind of interested in, in baking and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And also the, the artistry side, you know, the art supplies. And yeah. as a little bit as a child, you, you had an intrinsic sort of interest 
in all of that and you're able to sort of marry the, your passions together to mm -hmm. build a career out of it maybe you could kind of add to that story or that backstory a little bit more sure I really think um I get asked all the time like how do you know how to do this yeah <laughs> and <a> good question <laughs> it's kind of like you know my younger brother is a mathematics genius. My older brother is like gifted linguistically. People just have this weird knack where certain things, very mm. specific things come very easy to them. And for me, I think it's, you know, being creative and sort of figuring things out. Yeah. I've always, um, I've always looked and my friends make fun of me because I'll always see something and I don't want to buy it. I always think like, you know, I think I can make that. And they're like, girl, thank you. And it's going to take you like 20 or just one. But part of it is like my interest in figuring out yeah. how to duplicate something. Right, how to right. fix something. So I have a very keen eye for details. I'm really good at replicating things mm. and those happen to be the exact kind of skills you need to be able to fool people with cake um and then combine that with the fact that I don't know why but I've just always been mesmerized by the kitchen I just love baking I've loved baking and cooking I think it's the chemistry and the magic of putting mm. a bunch of things together that magically transform into something else that happens to be also very delicious um, and then I've always kind of liked the added component of making it beautiful, mm. right? Or making it, transforming it even further beyond just like, oh, here's like delicious sugar and flour and eggs. Yeah. It's like little lump. <laughs> like, well, how can we present it in a very pretty way? And that's where the, my interest in the arts and, um, you know, finding ways to kind of add my own creative flair. To Your own flair to it. Yeah. Were mm -hmm. you like, for example, as a child or even, you know, beyond childhood, were you into any other types of arts, whether it be say painting or sculpting or anything like of that nature? For sure. Every, every kind of art form I saw, I wanted to try. I remember speaking of modeling chocolate and clay. I wanted so badly to have a potter's wheel. Mm. Um, and I would just marvel at how people could manipulate this thing and like turn this lump of dirt into something beautiful. And so I, I, every Christmas I was like, please get me. They had this little kids potter potting wheel. Yeah. I finally, finally got this potting wheel. And of course <laughs> it runs on like two double A batteries. This thing like could barely turn the wheel while you're holding it. So it was such <laughs> a big lunch I left down but yeah no it, I still loved it it didn't matter that it didn't work very well okay um yeah no I've always been interested in yeah that. but even right now are you off to the side I mean of course like this is your profession your business the cake artistry and illusion but are you involved in any of the other form of art as well right now or just your <sighs> not time? really yeah. this takes up a lot of my time not to mention, it's not even my like main 100% like full-time job. I just kind of do this. It was a hobby on the side of my full-time job. So between that and my daughter and my husband, like all my time is taken up. Fair enough. Um, I hear you there. I used to actually, yeah, during, the, I'm sure you know, <laughs> time gets eaten up really quick when you have a family. But during the pandemic, I did um, have one pandemic hobby that I took up and that was sewing. So it's a different type of, you know, maker's art, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. And I found I had a knack for that as well. I don't know. I just, again, it's like I see something and I, I have this idea in my head that I can make it. And usually yeah, I can. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like a combination of various skills and, you know, the, the creative creative flair to it all, but then also kind of the dedication and the attention to detail that you'd mentioned earlier too. It's probably a lot of these things that just seem to have been, you know, all brought together in the right package i suppose of like being able to put it all together and, and create these magnificent works so yeah good for you thank you yeah all right well i do i think another... being a virgo is part of it too <laughs> like such a perfectionist i don't know people say like oh you're such a virgo yeah. <laughs> and there's yeah that part of it that's that i'm sure that element's in there though i mean at least the perfectionism you know like that it's got to sure. be part of what yeah. you're doing right now with the cakes um yeah because yeah 
All right. Well, I do have another question actually relating mm -hmm. to all of this. Um, and again, going back to the bio uh, and, and reading it off, I did uh, mention that you trained with some of the best cake artisans of the world, you know, around the world. Um, but I'd love to know, like, what was that all about? Like, how was it? Was it grueling? Was it, you know, mm -hmm. short? Was it long? Like, I have no idea about this. Um, you know, sure. yeah, it was... Um... So really, when I was starting out, uh, you know, as you mentioned in the bio, I, I saw Ron Ben Israel on TV and I wrote to him and he was nice enough to write back. And he gave me some suggestions about, you know, people who could teach me this craft. Um, so I started off, you know, with the basics and I found there were some cake artists that I was, I was seeing their work online really like wondering in the same way perhaps you are mm. how on earth are they doing that yeah. right that that part where I'm talking about you know making something that's defying gravity like in my mind it's like well how is that frog cake standing on two little skinny legs exactly right? yeah so I sought out specifically people who were doing things that I couldn't make I was like well right. it's killing me that I can't figure out how to make that so I um found uh, this one woman named Karen Portaleo, who's my absolute cake hero. Um, she does beautiful, beautiful work. Um, and luckily she came to uh, Canada to deliver a, a couple classes. Um, and I just jumped at the opportunity. She's from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, mm -hmm. So it was really a couple weekend classes, very specific skill sets. One was, you know, modeling a face. So figuring out those proportions. Um, and the other was that structure class. Like, how do you make those things? Right, it's driving right. crazy. So um, she was definitely a, a important um, teacher in my career, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a, a lot of uh, initiative on your part, you know, seeking this out. And I'm sure that's also, you know, one of the key ingredients, whenever you're sort of reading up on people that succeed within their profession or they excel to the top, it's, it's a lot of this, right? It's a lot of kind of like seeking out, of course, having some skill, you know, a lot of skill and ability attached to it is a big part of it. But then it's also that drive, you know, that drive mm -hmm. to, to learn, to, you know, address your weaknesses and what you mm -hmm. don't know. And uh, mm -hmm. the way I'm sort of interpreting it here is exactly you're sort of like fitting that sort of like mold or that line right now of like, you know, back in the day, uh, again, just going to the very best, trying to learn what it is they do um, and then how you can uh, and take it from there. And one other thing I'd like to add here too is that um, it was noted that you developed your own sort of unique style and uh, I don't know, flair to it all as well. I mean, could you comment on that? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know how I would describe it. Um, but this, I think it's whimsical, to be honest. I don't, I really don't like cakes that look like cake. <laughs> okay. I just am very like, if you ask me to make one, you know, I'll make one if you're a friend and that's exactly, and that's what you want. But yeah. like, it there's, just, there's not going to be any circular cakes coming out of no, your, there's no, no, nothing. no, it's not happening. All right. <laughs> I mean, I'll do, like I said, like, okay, if you're a good friend and I've been doing this for a while for you and you really, really want that, I'll make it for you, but it's just not my jam. Yeah. Um, so in terms of my own personal style, yeah, I think the wackier, the weirder, the better. I just, yeah. That's just my jam. Yeah, yeah. Well, if I think it's, it's gross. Like I'm good with that too. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's where the fun is, right? I mean, that is where the fun is. And that's why like what you do right now is exploding is because of this stuff. Like that is what's catching everyone's attention, I think. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's exactly what everyone's going to discover on your uh, on your show, on the Netflix show that's going to be, you know, out there very, very soon. So yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we go into a new question here? Um, you know, getting into, uh, you know, some of the finished products, I suppose, you know, with most great creations, whether they be, you know, artistically or technologically sophisticated, you know, the finished products um, and all the wonder and awe that they sort of like evoke, I find that they often sort of mask a lot of the hardships, challenges, dedication required to actually bring it to completion. And I'd love to hear your comments on that hardships well you know <laughs> challenges I mean like yeah. th th there must be you know uh, 
I don't know. There must be a lot of difficulty or, you know, you get to a certain point in the process and you've got this thing where like, you know, it's going the right direction. And then I don't know, this happens or something, you know, disastrous. Yeah, yeah. I suppose. Like, it, it's funny. There's, um, when it, there are many ways things can go sideways, <laughs> um, sure. you know, the cakes don't bake up as high as you intended. And like, now you're not going to meet the height that you're trying to get to, um, or the weather is a huge component, right? Because yes. So the absolute enemy of sugar and, you know, everything we're creating is basically covered in sugar is water and moisture. So in the summertime, when it's so humid, it's so, and hot, not to mention, yeah. it's so hard to work with these materials that basically melt, right? Yeah, okay. um, now it makes sense, yeah. So, yeah, so I had a cake once. Um, I had made this, uh, you know, actually it was an anime character. Right. I don't even know who this character was, but I put it all together. It was like perfect. And I put it aside for a moment, came back, and his whole face fell off. Uh, it was like two hours before I had to deliver it. And I was just like, oh, God. so yeah, just scrape it all off and start again and get it done, you know? Yeah. Um, so things like that. And then speaking of going back to that topic of structure, um, when you have multi tier cakes, you need mm. to have structure to hold all the weight of the cake that's piled on top of each other, or else it'll sort of sink into itself. Right. There was one cake I made where I, for whatever reason, forgot to put in the internal structure, <sighs> left it overnight. And it was a very elaborate cake, left it overnight, woke up in the morning, and it. it <laughs> oh. So I had to take it all off put in structure to repair it back to the so, hardware yeah, store so back <laughs> to the hardware store exactly so things can always go wrong but there's always ways to fix them yeah yeah no i was really curious just to kind of look into it from that perspective because again like you see these finished products and they're absolutely amazing and yeah i don't know I, I to me when i'm seeing this like at least when i'm considering it from my perspective or attempting to do something like that i would just be like well there'd be a million things that could probably go wrong and you know this is the fin final product that what you're aiming for but actually achieving that and how difficult it must be to get it to that point or to keep it at that point as you've added you know you have it done and then you know yeah. <laughs> something terrible happens you know it takes a long time hmm. to put these things together yeah. In fact, you know what you're describing, you have something in mind and you try to make it. That's a whole other Netflix show called Nailed It, right? It's like these folks who just have this idea of like, oh, I'm going to make that cake. And then they realize how hard it actually yeah. is. Yeah. Sort of well, actually, it. this is a perfect segue into the next question mm -hmm. that I have, which is relating to all of this. I mean, in terms of you know, rough timeline, say like, for example, you have a concept or a client comes to you and say, I want this. And then you're you know, brainstorming and trying to figure out how you're going to do it. You know, I'd love to know what that timeline is like or the flow is like. And then even maybe if you could add in like, I don't know, the, the level of difficulty or ease of some of those steps, perhaps, you know, what is the mm -hmm. most challenging part of it? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the part that you're describing, like thinking about the cake is actually time that I don't even consider. And you're right. That mm -hmm. is part of it, right? Like I have to think about how I'm, how will I recreate this? What kind of internal structure do I have to build to support it? Yeah. Doing research and finding all the reference photos and videos that I can, so I can see it from all different angles and replicate it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's already hours of time. Someone ha had asked me to make their um, sheep who dog and so I had to look for multiple videos of these dogs that kind of look like hers for multiple and you know, study these details. Yeah. So that, that's the starting point. I haven't even baked a single thing yet. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, you gotta go shopping for all the materials and then it's the baking, it's letting it cool, making the filling, you know, mm. we still have something that doesn't look like anything <laughs> you're intending. Um, then you get to the decorating part and that can take hours and hours. And if you have to add a structure on top of that, you have to build that too. Right. So mm -hmm. it can take days. One of the cakes I made, um, the hardest cake I ever made, 
I can't even tell you, maybe it took me a week. It was, wow. if I added all the hours I've worked on, Yeah. it was um, three retro televisions stacked on top of each other, each with the Tim Burton um, diorama inside. Oh <laughs> from that movie. You can imagine how much time that took. Yeah, yeah. Wow. In terms of, I guess, uh, you know, this doesn't have to be for you and your shop and what you do, but just generally within the industry, what would be, a, say, a price range of, of these custom order cakes? Like you'd mentioned somebody coming in like, I, this is the dog. This is my dog. Please make a cake mm-hmm. representing my mm-hmm. dog now. Mm-hmm. Or I want mm-hmm. this or I want this. You know, again, you don't have to say exact for, for you, but say industry standard, what would be kind of a starting point and how, how high can that ceiling go? Oh gosh, the sky's the limit. People are bonkers for this stuff. I mean, yeah, I've seen cakes that go to the ceiling. Like I've not personally personally done that, but mm-hmm. that's got to cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. I mean, at a starting point, I think, you know, 300, you know, these are not your sort of like grocery store cakes that you can get for 40 bucks, right? No, of course not. It's no. That the hours of expertise. Yeah, exactly. Training. That's what I mean. I mean, there's, yeah. well, just in, in your title, I mean, artistry. Yeah, that word is attached to it for a mean for for a reason, you know, mm-hmm. and then like you said, I mean, it sort of catches all of what it takes uh, mm-hmm. to to actually produce something as fantastic mm-hmm. as what it, you know you're doing. So, I mean, it's certainly justified. I was just curious; like, I had no idea where the starting and end points are. Most people don't, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, they and often it's like, well, it's just a small thing. But it's like, but the small thing you're asking you to make is like a Fabergé egg. Like, it's like, that's hard, right? Yeah, right. So um, it's not even, it's not the size, it's the level of detail, it's the level of yeah. difficulty, it's the number of hours that it takes and skill to put that together. Right, um, right, right. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. Well, I do have one more question in this Q&A discovery segment, and it's kind of bringing things up to speed where we're at right now. And I'm going to kind of time date this episode by even making the statement, but um, coming back to your Netflix, you know, participation in the show, is it cake? Um, Mm -hmm. Here in Japan, at the time of recording, it is March 18th, and this is the global release date of the show. So yeah, we're in the future compared to you right now. (laughs) The excitement, I'm just guessing. I mean, it must be absolutely palpable for you right now with this about to hit. Um, You're what, a day out, I suppose, yourself now. Um, So yeah, I'd love to know what was it? Well, first of all, maybe how did that all come about? How did you even get on the show um, to begin with? I think that would be an interesting story to, to hear about. Oh my gosh. It is the weirdest story ever. The it's best the weirdest ones. thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. So I, um, how did this all happen? I don't know. The answer is I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, so let me bring it back a little. I had my first child in 2019 and when that happened, you know, basically all my cake making came to a complete halt, all my time and energy. The world, your world. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And so um, I probably made one or two cakes in the span of like three years to maybe two and a half years. Um, And I don't have much of a social media following um yeah you know I would put out you know (laughs) photos of my cakes from time to time um and then in the context of all of this not being active in cake making not having any kind of social media presence let alone updating that social media presence um I got an email uh, a dm uh, in my instagram account someone saying hey I think you'd be really great for this show you'd have to come to LA what do you think? Wow. And what do what does a normal what, what, what person do you think? think? Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're a regular person in the context of that, what I just told you, you say, sure, sure, scammers. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I'm not gonna give you my credit card information today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you just book me my ticket? Here, here's my credit yeah, card information. Exactly. Just book that ticket to LA and uh, yeah, let me know the details. One hundred percent. Yeah. Right. I I one hundred percent thought it was a phishing scam. Yeah. Totally ignored it. Yeah. And then I kept getting messages from this person, um, from 
so they they found me through my website and then they found me through Facebook and they just you know luckily for me just didn't give up on me yeah um and finally I was like well that's not a normal thing for (laughs) for a pitching scam Mm. um so I wrote back to her finally okay what's this all about Mm. and through the entire sort of process of being selected for the show I was skeptical the entire time I must have been the most annoying contestant among all of them because I was like "Mm -hmm, tell me more very like (laughs) not trusting anything like LA yeah okay (laughs) (laughs) um and then finally the plane ticket showed up in my inbox I was like oh my gosh this is real (laughs) (laughs) wow yeah there it was I and I asked her specifically how did you find me why did you ask me to try out for this yeah she couldn't even remember she says i think i followed a hashtag and came upon your work get out of here eh? yeah it's so weird yeah yeah and now i mean geez I mean, again you're probably right on the cusp of several different sort of game-changing sort of i don't know Who's events that are about to take place for you i mean it's it's yeah it must be also exciting for you so exciting i'm not a person that um dreams big I'm so practical Hmm. um so the fact like I told you like they're asking me to do I'm like "Mm -hmm." you know I I just it's not something within the realm of like yeah possibilities I thought ever could have happened Hmm. to me so now that it has it I'm giving myself a little bit of space to really be like what could this actually mean you know yeah um and that must be so exciting. I mean, it must so be exciting. Yeah, so yeah. exciting and yeah. refreshing to think yeah. in a different way. Yeah, totally. <laughs> no, totally. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, there's something to it there, and I think that's a, a really interesting sort of insight or way of looking at it. You know, I, I again, I'm guessing here, but people who do succeed at whatever you know, whatever they do, oftentimes I think are so laser focused on what it is that they do, and they put all their time, effort, energy, and uh, emotion into it that coming up for air and kind of like uh, looking around and seeing like what else is out there and what else they can be doing sometimes is something that's often I'm, I'm guessing that is put off to the side because again that focus is on like being the best at what you're doing um mm-hmm. and in your case of course the cake artistry and just like really you know that that of course is what's fueled your success to this point but now being forced to kind of come up again come up for air and look around and like oh all right this is where i'm at now after having my head down for this long and this is what it's amounted to and now these new opportunities yeah having a look around and seeing what could be possible down the line must uh yeah must be nice to sort of balance out this whole sort of ride that you're part of for sure for sure it's it's very weird <laughs> it's new and yeah. I'm, I'm happy and excited about it for sure. Yeah. Um, really quickly as well, returning back to, uh, to the show, um, I'd love to know if there's anything, you know, what that experience has been like, anything that you can share, of course, without getting in trouble here. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So the experience, I mean, from the get-go, uh, I felt very much like an underdog. I think, again, wasn't expecting this at all, wasn't making cakes at the time when this all kind of happened. Um, I show up and the other eight contestants, they've either already been on TV baking competitions before or, you know, seasoned bakers, you know, with um, bakeries and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I felt very much like, are you sure? And I was the only Canadian as well. Everyone else on the show is American. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's very much like, did you get the right person? Are you sure you have the right April Julian? <laughs> um, and I was really scared, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to have to compete and like test my skills that I haven't been using for a couple of years on this platform? Right, right. This caliber of people, like, what have I done? So there was a lot of that, Um, but, you know, going through the different challenges and just, I just kept kind of, um, I don't know, I was sort of proving myself to myself, like you can do it, you know, don't be scared, just do your best like you always do, like forget about the rest. Um, 
And that strategy worked for me. It helped with my nerves. Um, yeah. And also the other contestants and everyone that worked on the show was so nice and encouraging, really supportive and wanted us to do well. So that mm. helped a lot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine so. I mean, that, that that comment of you know just coming back to who you are and what brought you there, what got you recognized was probably enough, you know, and it sounds like just in getting to know you in this talk here, you know, this intense sort of like focus on your work and, and attention to detail and all these things and just like zeroing in on like, this is what I do. That probably would have been a, a great aid to you in that sort of experience if, you know, you're able to kind of tap into that and just kind of block out all the noise around you, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That was unnecessary. You have the other thing is I'm not used to making these kinds of things in within time constraints. I right. mean, yes, I have a deadline, but like or within oh, a studio with cameras yes. and people and yeah, exactly. <laughs> sure, All yeah. those things. That must have right? been a yeah, slightly different experience than uh than mm -hmm. working out of your kitchen. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. timeline that we have is much shorter than I would ever give myself for any of the things that right, we right. created. Yeah. So that combined with like, oh my gosh, I'm a little bit rusty here. And now I have to be as good as I possibly, possibly can be in the shortest amount of time I've and ever And representing done a country, oh, you know, yes, no pressure yes. there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Canada and the Philippines, right? Because I have family. Two countries, okay. There. There you yeah, go. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much there to like choke, <laughs> but... No, uh, no, no. I, I'm really <laughs> excited to, uh, to, to watch this. Um, yeah, I've been chatting about it with my own family and my children and uh, I've got two young girls and they're just absolutely ecstatic over it and uh, really Ooh. looking forward to it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, why don't we skip on over into another segment here? It's something called a water cooler story segment. And mm -hmm. it is, as the name implies, uh, here, I just ask guests to indulge listeners with the story, you know, relating to, uh, to the profession. We've kind of almost talked about some of it already mm -hmm. with the Netflix stuff, but if you've got anything else, I'd love to hear. You know, what you, you know uh, that was the story with. I was going to tell about how this all came <laughs> together. Just um, that I was it's just so out of the blue. There are so many things that I guess uh, in my life that have kind of come um, accidentally, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then I would sort of pursue them and find like I had a knack for it. Um, so was there any I think moment? This is just a Sorry to interrupt there. Was there any moment, mm -hmm. for example, it might have been, I don't know, your first creation, perhaps, or it, it could be relating to, to cake artistry or, or some other form of art that you completed it. And it was something that you were just immensely proud of. You're like, yeah, I, I've got some skill here. Yeah, I can do this. Yeah, like, was there sure. something there in, in terms of that? Yeah, absolutely. So if I can think back to the very first time I put myself out there for to be judged, Mm. Okay. So, um, I, there's a local, um, cake decorating store that also has a school here in Canada, in Ontario, um, called, uh, icing inspirations. And they had a cake competition. The theme I believe was fairy tale weddings. And you could enter as, um, an amateur hobbyist or a professional. Um, so I decided, okay, let me see, let me give it a try. I entered as a, as a hobbyist and oh my goodness, talking about the mental sort of preparation of it all. It's like, how can I interpret this theme? Yeah. I'm trying to, I don't want it to be, uh, when you're asking like, what was my personal style? I just want, I just want it to be different. I want it to be unexpected. I don't want to make like, you know, the Disney princess castle with like Belle and the beast in the front or whatever. I just, I wanted to think of something that no one would expect. Yeah. So I decided to dream up a couple that wasn't actually ever a couple. Right. And I, um, it comes from a quote uh, from the wizard of Oz and I think it's the tin man who says something to Dorothy, like, now I know I have a heart because it's breaking mm. when she leaves Oz. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I thought, I'm going to make this wedding cake for Dorothy and the tin man. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was, um, 
And even to this day, it's like one of my favorite cakes. And it was an early one that I made. This was before, you know, making hyperrealistic stuff. Yeah. But I had the bottom tier was like a map of Oz. And then um, there was a middle tier that was sort of a memory box with pictures of, mm. of the Tin Man and Dorothy. And then the top was a hot air balloon. Um, oh, wow. And I very reluctantly put it out there for this competition. I was so scared, you know, bordering on like embarrassed, like, why did I do this? Like, mm. you know, this, this is silly. Um, and I won. Wow. <laughs> I won not just the, the, you know, for the cake itself. I also won the People's Choice Award. Wow. wow. Um, That's some recognition then. Yeah. And so, yeah. I, and then I was kind of like, hmm. Maybe I am actually. Good. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> sort of like this. that confidence. It's sort of like you're. All right, it's building. Exactly, it's, it's just building, building. building. Mm. So a couple of years later, I um, and they had another competition. And I was like, okay, it was the Tim. The theme was Tim Burton, um, yeah. and I I love Tim Burton movies. Yeah, I love the too, visual yeah. spectacle oh, yeah. of his movies. And so I said to myself, look try in the professional category this time. Let's see what happens, you know? Same process of me doubting myself and going, what are you doing? Why are you putting yourself through this? Um, so I made that cake that I described to you at the yeah. television. Yeah. And once again, took everything home, took prize for everything. Nice, nice. Yeah. This is meant to so, be. So I guess, I don't know. I'm just one of those people who has, um, who reluctantly shares their talents. I don't know why that is. I also like play piano my entire life and I never wanted to play for anyone. If anyone yeah, would listen, yeah. I would I would just kind of stop. So yeah. yeah. I'd imagine to a certain extent, like that probably is part of what fuels people like yourself to succeed in a way is like, it's 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 never good enough in a way, you know? And that sort of drive for perfection is what puts mm -hmm. it up, like say what, the masses are producing might be at this level but you yourself are like yeah i don't know if it's that good but really in reality to anyone else like stepping away and looking at this you know, comparing say other cakes with, in terms of what you do you're way up here but you're still kind of like going yeah i don't know it could be better it could be you know <laughs> it's that sort of sort of analysis like obviously that can be dangerous you know you don't want to go For too sure. far over into that but part of i part of that though too has got to be what has again as i said you know fueled your success is like that attention to detail has really you know set you on a different sort of plane uh, as compared to others um and yeah that, it must play a big part it's that and i think i'm just i don't know maybe i'm tough on myself mm. i don't know if that's a cultural thing or how it was brought up but it's just like always my my father and my mother always do your best no matter what it is yeah. you're doing yeah. and i'm always trying to top what is my best yeah yeah well, i i think it's a mark of of someone who's successful you know quite clearly i mean like what, what you're doing right now and where you're at and uh, all you've experienced thus far and i stress thus far because i think it's all <laughs> about to explode but um yeah i i think that sort of mindset has probably played a large part of your early success and probably a lot of what you're going to experience moving forward we'll see we'll see yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right well we are moving along at a pretty good clip here and we are heading around the bend into the final segment here um and it's something called a crystal ball segment and as the title implies we're looking towards the future here a little bit um, and I want to start off this by kind of acknowledging that this whole cake artistry and illusion, um, it's been blowing up. I mean, you would know that better than I would, but, mm. um, I continually see this in my feeds and, and elsewhere and people even talk about it, you know, conversations about this. So I'd love to know, like, how do you see this sort of niche sort of field within cake and decorating and artistry sort of evolving or developing where, like, where is it going? Do you think? I don't know. I, it's like getting more and more bizarre, <laughs> you know? Which is great, right? I, I mean, that must be wonderful for you, but... I guess, but where does it end? Because, <laughs> like, I saw the other day um, someone basically, you know, cutting into the chair they were sitting in, cutting in, like, the doorknob off the door. Like, now we're, like, dealing with really big pieces yeah. in your environment, not just, like, oh, here's a tin can yeah. of beans, right? Right, um right. so like 
how many things can we turn into a cake? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's got to stop it. So there's maybe, maybe it's on the path of kind of like the, the whole gingerbread house thing. Like, you know, like how, how that caught fire and then you go into like these grand hotels and they'd have like these, oh. you know, like basically exhibits where you're like walking through them. But I mean, right. who knows? Here you just eat yourself out of your hotel room. <laughs> exactly. right. I mean, it sounds fun to me. I mean, that'd be great. But yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's a, that's a intense. Yeah. I don't know if that, that, I want to make things at that scale. Right, I find right. when they're that huge, yeah. like um, you'll miss some of the finer details. I also think yeah. it's like, who's going to eat that quantity of cake? And it feels right, sort of right. I, even like kind of, uh, I don't know, I was thinking as well as you were researching this and, and whatnot. And one of the things that kind of, I don't know, was popping into my mind, like, how do you do all of this? And you kind of already answered it earlier on, but um, I'll bring it back up again, is like some of the tools that are used. And you mentioned the hardware store now, yeah. but I'm guessing like it's not far off and maybe it's already out there now, like with a lot of this interest um, going towards it, you're probably going to have product lines that are, you know, products and tools aimed at helping people get into it, you know, sort of mm-hmm. like starter kits, if you will, or, mm-hmm. you know, things that you could, again, buy from a hardware store, perhaps, but now mm-hmm. they've just been packaged up nicely in this colorful sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, like, this yeah. is for cake artistry. You for know, sure. Are you starting to see that right now? Or? Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of both. Um, there are very specific tools that I think um, already existed for the art world. So tools to manipulate clay, for example, yeah. um, that are now, as you said, sort of repackaged for yeah. uh, cake decorating purposes. But also ultimately with me and my work, um, I think you said it earlier, there's not, uh, or perhaps you didn't, but there's there's not a tool for everything. Mm. And you just have to be resourceful. And I think part of that is like my success is, is that I am a very resourceful person. I come from a family of folks who, yeah, you just make the best of the things that you have and um, figure out how to find a solution for the particular problem at hand. So if I want a specific texture, how can I mimic that? Do I have to go out and buy a very specific mold that will create that? Or if I just crumple this little piece of tinfoil, is that gonna make that weird texture I'm trying to get? And it's just about experimenting. Um, So yeah, you don't, there may be tools that come out of this, but more often, and and there are, more often than not, the way I am, it's like, I feel like I can make that. And I just (laughs) find another way to do it without having to spend the money on it. Okay, okay. Are are, are we gonna see a, a, April Julian line of cake artistry uh, products, maybe. Uh... <laughs> Here's my roll, April Julian's roll of tin foil. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> All right. Well, just just some food for thought there on that one. Uh, pun intended as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right. I, I do have one last question here for you. Um, now, again, in researching for this talk, um, you know, of course, the industry and what you're doing, and then also you and yourself and visiting some of your, your uh, profiles online, social media, and so, uh, so on and so forth. Um, I was also, also starting to come across articles. You know, one was uh, People Magazine, which obviously is a big one. Um, what, what, what is that like? I mean, finding your name attached to something like that, and now like, people are going to be searching you out. Um, as I said a few times, I mean, I think you're right on the cusp of things really blowing up on a number of different levels. And uh, a mention in a publication such as that is going to help that cause, uh, whether you want it or not, I suppose. But <laughs> yeah. It's bizarre. It's very bizarre. Um, I don't know what to say. Like every time um, I see my name pop up in an article or even just my, even if my name isn't in it, but like there's our cast photo, yeah. um, you know, in the guardian or whatever, it's just like, what is happening right? <laughs> to my yeah. life? Again, it's all these things that I could never have imagined or expected for myself. Mm. Um, and if anything, like probably did a lot of things that like prevented this from happening sooner, just because of my own like skepticism and yeah. shyness and like oh that can't possibly be for right, me right, right. Yeah. um but now it's like the universe is like april <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
we people <laughs> need to see what you're doing so we're gonna yeah, force yeah. this we're gonna force your hand coming in yeah it's kind of zeroing in on you isn't it it's funny like that yeah well based off of that is there are, or are there any sort of i don't know things that maybe say 18 months ago that you know would have seemed just so far-fetched in terms of you maybe attempting to do or possibility wise like maybe this is something you'd like to do but now that could be reality is something that you could potentially do or look towards is there anything (laughs) you know what's so funny my absolute favorite show in the whole entire world is the great british baking show yeah just like brings such warmth to my heart every time i'm having a bad day i'll turn on that show and it's like oh so it's always been my dream to be on that show or even the great Canadian baking show. Yeah, it's yeah. just such a lovely, it seems in my mind, actually just, I don't know what it's like in real life, but it just seems like such a good nature, mm. like heartwarming experience. Yeah. So who knows, maybe in one capacity or another, maybe I'll get to judge a hyper-realistic cake segment or something like that, but I would you know, it would never have crossed my mind that might even be a remote possibility. But now I'm putting it out there in the universe. I'm thinking, maybe, yeah, maybe this, uh, <laughs> this might be something. Yeah, if we uh, touch base within three months, six months, or a year, or, you know, this this could be something that, uh, yeah, we, we might be talking about it again. Love it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> That's well, it's also exciting. Um, I, I do think we are finally drawing to a close here, though. And uh, I must say, though, April, I mean, it's been absolutely fascinating. Like I, I myself learned a ton already, um, you know, right out of the gate, hardware store, never saw that one coming, <laughs> it blindsided me, amongst many other things that you shared today. And uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on this show and, uh, and share. So thank you. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, great. All right. Well, if you'd like today's show, please be sure to share. Um, And of course, too, you can find out more about April's work by visiting her website, apriljulian.com. You can also find her on Instagram, TikTok. And as I mentioned many times over her show, um, Is It Cake, which is debuting on Netflix globally. Um, Very, very exciting stuff. Uh, of course, all of this information will be included on in the show notes. And again, yeah, if you enjoyed today's show, please share. Um, I think it's great if we can learn a little bit more about what each other's doing, stresses, pressures. I mean, there's enough divide out there. And if we can kind of learn and understand about these things, um, it brings us together. And I think that's never a bad thing. Um, also to, you know, please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you access your podcasts. Um, and then also one other thing you can do is head on over to YouTube. We do have a life as a YouTube channel where you can see full video conversations, uh, much like we had today. And for this particular episode, I strongly, strongly recommend everyone to go over there. Um, The beginning of these episodes will feature a slideshow in which you'll be able to see a lot of April's work, which, uh, yeah, will just blow your mind if you haven't seen it already. So please head on over there and hit the subscribe button. Um, And then finally, don't forget to join us on the next episode of Life As A, where we'll continue to explore and unearth the details of professions and the people behind them. I'm your host, Christopher Schoenwald. Until next time, stay curious about life and living.